Last week I streamed chess with a lot of different content creators, and one of those people in particular is named Kurt Hugo Schneider. And he's got a massive channel here on YouTube with over 13 million subscribers, the primary focus of his work being music and music videos. But he's also a chess genius. He's close to 2300 in strength, and he actually achieved the title of Master 2200 before I did. He was at an earlier age in life. So he and I played against uh, a few people, did some hand and brain, which is when one person says a piece and the other person has to move it. And then at the end of this video, we talk a lot about different openings and what we think is appropriate at various levels of the game. Timestamps are on the video player. Hope you enjoy, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. Got it, they just played D4, yeah? Yes, 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 there we go. Okay, um, uh, let's, 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 let's go pawn. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh man, I knew if I said pawn, it would, would probably lead to that. Okay, cool, let's do it. Um, knight. I have to say, I've never played the Dutch from either side, but... but it's, it's intuitive. Cool. I'm ready. Pawn. So it's actually funny. In this particular move order, there's benefit, pluses and minuses to going g6 versus d6, but okay, they play g3. Um, bishop. That was not complicated. Uh, let's do, I guess, king. Okay. So far, so good. So far, main line. Yeah, okay, that's a very... Ooh, okay, pawn. Yeah, that's a very bold and direct move. Let's take it. Okay, just think about this for a moment. We have a few tempting possibilities here. Yeah, we do. There's a lot of moves that are okay. Um, hmm. I'm gonna go with pawn. Interesting. What do you want? <laughs> do you want to be solid, or do you want to be... I'm very confused. Is this what you wanted? Um, that was one possibility. Uh, I also thought, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I wasn't really certain. I guess d6. I mean, what else? was there like also e5 maybe? Yeah, but e5 actually didn't work. I was thinking about it, but now that I see that there's a queen d5 check at the end. Uh, yeah, I was I was thinking so something I, like this. I, I was thinking like about going for e5 or like takes takes e5, but then I was like, oh, queen d5 check. So I guess d6 is probably the only way. Or c6, I mean, like, which yeah. was another pawn idea, but... Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. There was like, I, you can also... Oh, you... snap. Lights went off. Oh, well. Is that, is that bad? No, no, it's, it's all good. Um... Let's go. Bishop. That's not complicated. Only legal move. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, this was a weird one this night this this early E4 line. Wow. Hmm. Hostile. Yeah, okay. Uh Rook. Wonder where. Yeah, this looks uncomfortable. I probably would have played Bishop G seven. Yeah, I was worried that our king would be too weak with the bishops gone. But yes, I see. I think I think it's 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 just from an experience standpoint. Like I'm like, eh, bishop is you know it's a little sus, but nothing terrible. I don't. Got would it. you have like? Would you have played rook f seven? Because obviously bishop d five doesn't do anything since we have pieces. Um, but I guess rook f seven was the move that came to mind. But to be honest, I don't know. I mean, yeah, rook f seven was probably what I would have played. But that's probably a good reason for playing rook e eight. <laughs> yeah, I think bishop. Well, bishop g seven. White can also play like queen d two and not necessarily trade. Uh, but yeah, this guy's very solid opening 
play so far from Mr. Phoenix. He's, uh, I'm assuming if he's born in 2008, then he's 12. So we might be playing a future champion. All right. What shall we do? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Uh, -huh. uh how, how do I, I, I clicked off you for a moment. I need to get back. Apologies. Okay, let's go back to the leaderboard. We're gonna do this do this the long way. Um observe game playing. Okay, okay, I see. 92. Um let's go with I guess knight. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Some sort of, um, I think it only started happening like in the last like ten, five, ten minutes. When, when you're, when you start talking, otherwise it's okay. But there's like a little bit of a, I don't know what the word is. I can, I can oh, noise. Like a little bit of yeah, a little bit of like scratching you know noise. It's probably my laptop fan is coming on. Oh, okay. I'm gonna well, get, I'm gonna get the mic nice, close, and personal. If I'm that, too loud. I can turn it down. No, no, that sounds that's that sounds good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, let's go with pawn. Yeah, we'll do a little uh, chess ASMR. Yeah, we gotta we gotta go definitely five. Yeah, that's the one. It's funny. I was using a laptop forever. Then I became more serious about this whole streaming thing. Now I can like I just I just don't even. My laptop I use like 20 minutes a day for errands and ordering on Amazon. Gotcha. S standing. I understand. If I have to like render out some like crazy video thing, it's like whew, the power of the desktop is felt for sure. And I'm hearing that little hiss too. Let me see what I can do. Is that make it better or worse? Oh, definitely worse. Okay, I don't know. Okay, let's go night. There is a move here I don't like. Actually, never mind. It's not I, so bad. Okay. I, there's definitely a move that I would be concerned about. I mean, I'm thinking our whole position is possibly a little bit sus right now. I, I, I thought about that too, but there's this move I'm, I'm actually not so scared of. At first I was scared. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so scared. There, there's okay. a good response. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at things. Is it? Is it kosher for me to like say what I'm thinking? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, though, yeah. even though you're the hand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I'm looking at like ideas, like like f4 and stuff for him. I mean, we got like knight f5 ideas coming, but um, whew, it's uncomfortable too. Obviously, he just wants to put a knight on e4, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got the d4 square though. It's probably not too bad, I guess. Let's go knight. Yeah, I feel like this is right. <sighs> okay. I have an idea. Okay. But... Um, hmm. Really think, not sure. Really not I sure. Idea, but what I should be going for. Let's go bishop. Hmm. This? Well, I was thinking I wanted to trade the dark squared bishops, but I don't oh. know. I was thinking bishop g5 made some strategic sense, but I'm not sure. Maybe I should have just moved the knight. I was like trying to, I was like, is he trying to make, oh, bishop g5, interesting. Take, take, uh, you weren't afraid because knight e4, you just move? Uh, 
Yeah, I was just thinking 94, like, I don't know. It's probably temporarily annoying, but now we permanently have the D4 square for the knight once I trade the dark thread bishop. That was my thought, at least. That's so interesting. I would have never played knight bishop g5, and it, it like, it... I could be the genius, or you could be the genius. There's no... Well, it's unlikely to be me, but let's see. Um, let's let's play let's play bishop, I guess. So I guess we just gotta. I'm assuming this is what you meant. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bishop h six is is asking too much, I think. But yeah, this guy is uh, one of those more one of the stronger 1700s I've ever played. Let me tell you, his, his whole... yeah. Yeah, yeah, putting up quite quite a bit of resistance here. Um, I mean, objectively, the position's probably just a bit better for white, but... Um, Let's see why. I, I guess pawn. Yeah, it, it, it seems like the, the plan of expansion on the queen side. Okay, oh, pawn. God. Okay, so, yeah, generally what you do here is you play this, yep. right? Yep, yep. Oh. I mean, and at the very least, we get sort of a similar thing going on, but our rooks activate it. Yeah, this is very common to stop like c5. You want white to play b5 here? Totally, um, totally. Oh, yeah, if he plays b5, I'm super happy. I mean, I'm assuming he's playing a3. To be honest, I, I don't know if he's thinking about doing something crazy like, like c5 himself right now, because otherwise... Yeah, there's um, moments you just you you just leave it all behind. Yeah, the only two th moves I would consider for white here are like a three and c five. To yep. be honest. Yep, yep, yep. A three and uh, and c no b five is is an awful move. Um and okay, right on cue. This is <laughs> good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> all right, we'll take well, those. I mean, at least now we never have to worry about c five coming. Okay, let all me right. think how we want to do this now. And feel free to play the clock too, because we don't oh, have any yeah. bonus time. Okay, okay. Um, let's let's play queen. I guess I'm not sure. Well, I only have one queen move that doesn't lose a queen, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, slow playing it a little bit. At some point, well, I don't want to. Yeah, no. At some point, you're saying I, I should throw a knight into d4 or something. I mean, yeah, I I agree. This figure, like, the knight on f5 is also somewhat annoying, because as soon as I throw a knight into d4, I have to, like, think about him playing f4. Uh-huh. I, I always think about taking on d4, and then we doubled our e-pawn. Sorry, we, 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 have, we have doubled pawns if we go to knight d4. And uh -huh. this knight on e4 is, like, the beacon of hope for him. It's yeah, just... it's, it's going to be annoying. I mean, at some point, we'll probably attempt to trade the bishop for that knight, I guess, but... I mean, yes. right now, my plan is just, like, throw some rooks on the F file and then see what's happening in the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's, that's the extent of my strategy at this point. When he goes oh. B5, it's really important to understand, like, just for... not I'm not not explaining mm -hmm. this to you. You, you totally all good, understand. All good, all good. But, like, um, the whole board closes down on this side, basically. Like, the whole game oh. now shifts to the other side. So we... Okay, so queen... Yeah, so it's an interesting question. I mean, queen f7, obviously, but maybe queen f8. I don't know. Ooh. Um, I'm happy to see that move. Okay, knight. I mean, I... Yeah. I'm definitely very happy to see g4. I'm not saying that we have an amazing position. It's just... Like, obviously, he's trying to play, like, f4, probably next move, I guess, but... Um, Every move is coming instantly, my god. Okay. We should speed uh, up, too. <laughs> okay, rook. Rook, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, I agree with you. I was... I, was ex I mean, g4 is a very... Okay, pawn. Like, that's a very All committal right. move. Too. I have to think our position is totally fine now. I mean... Yeah. I... 
before G4, I was just assuming we were like slightly worse the whole time. Even with this B5 stuff, I just figured it's probably has can't be. Like Actually, white can't have too bad of a position. I got very scared after G4 because I think after knight D4, F4 is exceptionally strong. Yeah, I assume that was what he was going for, but I just... To bring the rook and then F6, and I was like, are we... What's going on here? <laughs> um, but uh, now I'm very happy because, okay, now I'm, like, thrilled. <laughs> okay, no. okay. There's several things that come to mind right now. Um, let's start with queen. Yeah... No more F4, huh? Yep, yep. That, that's that's the one. No, I, once we play Queen F4, I think it's almost like a, it's like lost for white. Okay, actually. his dark squares are looking juicy. I like. I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I didn't think about that. I feel like. There should be something good other than the thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. Hmm. A lot of nice moves here. I feel like there's something here, but I don't see it. A lot of nice moves. We could play we could play basically anything. I'm muted, so he can say something and think about it. <clears throat> but, uh... I guess let's go queen. Did you want me to take? I don't know. I figured I'd just let <laughs> you make the decision. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, um, let's go with, uh, rook. I'm assuming this. This just looks way yeah. too natural. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I was intending. Yeah, it's like we should have something somehow, but... Uh... No, this feels good. It's just... Um, I want it even more, but this feels good. Uh, okay, let's, let's, go, let's go bishop. Okay. Okay, that doesn't look good. That looks wrong somehow. Um, oh, man, I really feel like that's... Oh, God, we have so many ideas with pushing the pawn and, and things, too. But um, hmm, Let's start with bishop. Okay. Okay. Uh... Let's just not lose on time. Okay, Rook. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's think about how to do this. Thank you for reminding me about the time, though. No, it's okay. It's just rated, and if I lose, I lose 88 points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm good. I'll try, I mean, he deserves I'll try it. To, he deserves try it. I'll try to, to help you out, you know. He only, I only gain two if we win. Okay. Uh, it's Rook. That is what I was going for. Yeah, but. <laughs> I was trying to sack, but it, it didn't quite it didn't quite work. But his position is on the verge of like total collapse. So it's like important not to pawn. Yeah, this right. Yep. Keep chipping away. Yep, we, yep. We, we, oh. we screwed it up a I... little, <laughs> like a tiny bit. I think. Well, there we could have broken through on the last move. We had a cool combo, like take G four. Take f1, take e4, kind of a thing. Okay, pawn. But this should be also very good. This looks very nice. Uh, there's also this. King. Yes, I just drew it. Yep. <laughs> a, new, a new thing opened, which is important to remember. Yep, I thought he had to take with the f pawn, because this is looking very, very dangerous. I mean, there's all sorts of sacks that I'm thinking about now, too. Um, Rook. I'm just going to do this. I'm yep, sorry. Yep. No, oh. no. Rook. Okay. I really wanted to do this for a while. 
Okay. Um, fish up. This just doesn't look. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Uh, bishop. Oh, dang it! I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I just. Sorry. 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 Apologies. Apologies. Like, no. Apologies. Make you work for it even harder. Okay, bishop. Bishop now. Okay, now bishop. Yeah. Yes. I was like rook h three. Yep. yep. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's, man. Let's just go pawn. <laughs> uh, bishop. Um, uh, oh, this is actually not as simple as I thought. Uh, um, uh, rook, I guess. Oh, uh, uh, rook. Yep, pawn. Nice. Pawn. Bishop. <laughs> Bishop. I'll go. I'll go. B Bishop. Bam, Bishop. bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Yeah. He got close, but not close enough. <laughs> I, <laughs> I couldn't let him take the 88 points. <laughs> no yeah. way. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was good, though. He played very well. He played very well. Okay, yeah, that was interesting. I mean, I'm assuming we were worse for quite a bit there. Yeah. I'm I don't know uh... if there was something I should have done significantly different in the opening, because I just felt like we sort of had just one of those sort of uncomfortable, slightly worse positions. What a great way for me to convince you to play the Dutch is to barely, <laughs> barely survive an opening against someone 400 points low or 500 points lower than you. Oh boy. No, no. Um, yeah, something went wrong, but it was, it was in the opening. Definitely. Yeah. So let's see. So what, what should I have done? I felt like I maybe should have broken in the center somewhere sooner, but uh, when he, when he took on E4, the line is take, take, and then uh, C6. And d5. Yep, I remember this. And then black oh, okay, is, okay. Black is instead actually of, better. Instead of d6 playing c6 to go for d5, is that what you're saying? To take on e4 and then c6. Yep. Oh, take on e4, then c6. Got e it. Because the position is you have both a bishop out, but you are uh, castled. Got it. So, And you're about to win another move on their bishop. So if they play like knight e2, d5, like, for example, take, take, bishop g4. Oh, what I learned here was knight c6 and, and e5, and black is fine. Bishop g4 also, actually. Spinning. Got it. You cool actually inviting me to that analysis board because I'm a noob and can't figure out how to follow you properly? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, that's ap actually... ap ap apologies. No, that's actually my bad. I literally skipped that step. My bad. No worries. No I'm worries. Thanks, dude. All these arrows, and I got too excited to jump into the game. I'm like one of those, uh, you ever had an opponent um, after the game who's so excited to talk to you, they can't, like, help themselves? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. It's like, I think you could have went here! It's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Relax. Let's get out of the tournament hall. Let's not yell. Um, <laughs> did you like to analyze games after they were over? Not really. I mean, no. If if I lost, I was probably like upset about it and didn't want to look at it. If I won, then I wouldn't want to put my opponent in a position to look at it mm -hmm. because that just seems like kind of rude. And if it's a draw, then no I don't happy. know. Like like maybe, but I I figure I'm just gonna look at it later with a computer. Yep. And the computer is going to know 10 times more than either me or my opponent. So, yeah. That's the truth. Yep. Yeah, and like, networking at chess tournaments isn't quite the thing, yeah? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're... No, actually, rook e8 and rook f7 are preferred. Interesting. So what's wrong with bishop g7? Take, take, knight e2... Okay, I mean, it's, it's, it's about the same kind of situation. So keeping the rook on is, it's all like plus 0. 0.6, plus 0. 0.7, the usual stuff. He plays d5, we play knight e7, knight c3. Yeah, this bishop e3 move was really creative. Yeah, so here, this was the position where my thought was bishop g5, but I'm not at all convinced about it. I mean... 
My idea was basically, I mean, I'm assuming he's trading and then I'm worried a little bit about some like quick F4 coming or something, but, but oh. I guess I, uh, computer's trying to say that, yeah, the early F4 is what, um, uh-huh, got it. Yeah, I know we're, like, kind of lacking in development quite a bit, but I figured if there wasn't something immediate, I wanted the Dark Squared Bishops gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. EF4 and Rook F4 is an issue. Otherwise, it's, like, it does look pretty good. But, really, this was the story of the entire middle game. He didn't... Oh, here, he also missed Bishop G5. Ooh, that's uncomfortable for us, for sure. Oh. Huh. Yeah, Bishop G5, like when I realized that he had this, and then he can start going for some, some stuff. Uh, but then he did this. He missed Bishop G5 again. Apparently B5 is fine, which is completely insane to me, but what do I know about chess? Um, I mean, me too. I wouldn't consider the move B5 if I was playing white. It wouldn't come to my mind. I thought the G4 was brilliant. Oh, and turns out it was. Got it. We have to play H6 here. Okay. Hmm. Wow. So knight D4, are we losing after F4? Not only are we losing, it's plus four. I see. Well. Gotcha. Wow. Look at that. I mean... F4. Great move. And then once the rook joins the party... It's lost, because rook takes f4, and where the yeah, hell is our, our queen going? Yeah, the, the lady's trapped. Yeah, I, ha I had a feeling when, when this g4 happened, I was like, uh... But then he played bishop back. At this point, I was feeling really good about our position. I was like, his dark squares are so ugly. Yeah. Well, rook f8, I was still very worried about f4. And then he did this, which was... I mean, he played two bad moves in this game, and they came right here. So, Yikes. yeah, maybe I should have played bishop e5 instead of queen f4. No, look, I mean, queen f4 is top engine move. Oh, okay. Yeah, you said queen, I said queen. We, 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 did the, we did the thing, and then this is good. And Because obviously, like, I wanted to, you know, throw the bishop on the dark squares, play the queen into f4, and yeah. Oh, and it turns out that d3 is the best move here, because I know you were looking at the immediate... Yeah, so I was looking at d3, and I just... Uh, is there some sort of sack with rook takes e4? I like... Because I figured if there wasn't something that I could concretely see, the pawn on d3 could in some positions be weak, so... Well, here there's this. Is what I saw. Oh, because the knight hangs at the end. Yeah, but I'm, yeah. S I'm, s I'm skeptical because, like, rook... You know, opposite colored bishops. That's... Totally, totally. I mean... But... I imagine this is just winning somehow, but yeah, if the rooks come off, it's going to be very difficult. So yeah, we had this bishop thing, but then uh, we were chipping away, chipping away. One thing he missed, of course, here the best move for white is to just get the knight out of there. Mm, yeah, totally. Get, get this out. I'm... Yeah. Yeah, I figure I just, I don't know, slowly improve with the king, play h5 at some point still, and... No, oh, we missed something cool here too. King G seven okay. is second best. Apparently, we can chop. Okay, okay. Chop. Let me think. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's a nice one. But I totally. also actually went for King G seven because you know brain is like oh, open H file. Totally. So, as soon as the H files open, I'm like, let's mate him, and then don't play mate in one after yes. you try to mate him. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh. This is and then okay. Is Rook F three the best move? Oh. I guess you wanted this. There's also this. Huh, I didn't even think about taking this. Yeah, so rook takes e4 with bishop g4 here was what I was thinking with rook. Wow. But Oops. I figured rook takes f3 was probably like just, like all the moves looked good. His position just looks like it's falling apart. Yes, and then he goes here, here, and then he hangs mate in one, but we wanted to give him a <laughs> chance. Yeah. We wanted to, uh, to give him a, a shot to... Yep, yep. Mabi. Play, play, play a few more moves. Um, but then, uh, yeah. Well, by the way, even with Bishop H5, it's still very, 
I mean, I assume the position's just winning anyway. Like, I don't know. It looks looks strong. Like, did you ever play Queen's Gambit Decline? Because I... I I never did. So I I played Knight F6 before playing all this E6, B6 stuff. And I never really played D5. Maybe, maybe when I was, like, um, very young. Uh, like, possibly up to 15, 1600. I, I, maybe I played D5 a little bit. I could never do it just because, like, if, if I was going to, I would have to play a more exciting version of the Queen's Gambit Declined. So something like Bishop B4, like Rogozin mm. or something. Uh, yeah. Did you ever hate facing the Catalan? I hate facing, like, any of these sort of... Yeah, I, I don't like facing the Catalan. I don't like facing the London. I don't like facing any of these sort of, like d4 systems that white just sort of plays the first like five moves like automatically mm -hmm. i mean like there's nothing i'm gonna do against the catalan like white's gonna be able to play d4 c4 yep. knight f3 g3 bishop g2 like so yeah um yeah and i i don't know i mean it's just sort of like felt a little unpleasant maybe this position the, these types of catalan positions from black always felt a little unpleasant for me but yep. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Why, that, that's why I asked. <laughs> I I think I usually try to play them by playing a uh, fast c5 somewhere. Okay. Um, Something like even as early as this? or Maybe, yeah. Like, I'm not sure. And then, like, oftentimes I'd end up playing some kind of isolated queen pawn thing, maybe. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I, I like, really looked at this stuff, so I, I don't know. What, what would you recommend? What do you play? So I'll tell you, um, I still have it from, from White's perspective, right? So mm -hmm. uh, specifically from White's perspective, one thing that I can say, what will really, really like shorten your, your, your need for study. Actually, I'm going to uh, top 10 anime betrayal. I played the London. <laughs> one of the things that, that, that did it for me is I played D4. And my repertoire was Knight F6. If you play Trumpowski, you no uh -huh. longer have to deal with King's Indian, Benoni, Nimso, Benko, <laughs> Grunfeld, <laughs> everything. Um, so against uh, like, you know, D5, uh, mm -hmm. I was taking for a while. Got it. Uh, and this is totally different than what somebody playing with the black pieces is used to. Um, so if E6... One of my favorite lines here... So first of all, you can just go e4 if they play e6 and take the mm -hmm. full center. Um, and this is nice because then you'll trade mm -hmm. something like this and then just play like knight f3, c3, bishop d3, knight d2, castle. Like very chill. Yeah, th this position looks very comfortable. Yeah. e4, e4 is good. And I had a backup line, which was a, a favorite of mine, which is knight d2, just trying to go here. And one of the lines that's recommended in many books here for black is h6, bishop h4, c5. Okay. To get frisky. And white goes e4. Ooh. Sacking the right. pawn. Let's see. Now we have to start looking at things. I mean, yeah, if black takes on d4, e5 is getting super messy. But, I mean, black's probably forced to play g5, I'm guessing, in that position. Exactly. And that's, so, like, probably exactly what white wants. Yes, exactly. So bishop g5. Uh, sorry, bishop, not bishop g5. Um, mm -hmm. And then here you go h4. And, like, this yeah. is already very spicy. Yeah, um, that's, that's looking fun. I like that. I've had I like a, stuff like this. Yeah, sure. no, this is like already, and, and here Black already has like a total minefield to walk through. So first of all, the one move that just loses on the spot is this. Okay, um, let me see, because probably knight e4 is, uh, wait, let, 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 let me think. Just I mean, I want to put a knight this, on yeah. d6, so, mm -hmm. I mean, knight e4 and knight c4 are moves that come to mind. Um, yeah, I... I don't see anything specific, but I guess knight c4 looks very promising. It stops the queen checks and annoying things and just looks really good. Yes, it's going to be knight c4 uh, instead of knight e4. Very good. Like, that's that's how you identify the difference, guys, by the way, if you're ever confused. Um, knight c4 stops any sort of check, which is what you have to think about. And actually, like, throwing in this move first is even better. Got it. 
Because if queen takes, now this comes with an attack and knight d6. Yeah. Mm, so pawn takes is basically force. And I and guess I uh, trade rooks and... Even this. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now oh, they yeah, have man, to go that's here. Gonna, that's going to get uncomfortable. <laughs> and now knight c4 and it's just lost. It's just lost. Wow. Uh, yeah, now you're threatening mate. Yeah. It's like literally mate and two. Um... And that, like, that's the like I've I've won a few, probably like ten or fifteen games of Blitz just like this, and I've never won a classical game uh, quite like this. But after H four, I, yeah, many games have gone, uh, because like you know you know the plans and you know the best moves for white, you know the best moves for black. There's few, so it's easy. Totally, to... totally. It's just one of those positions where there's much easier to play with white. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So against E six, like you have some options. One thing I added later to my arsenal of shenanigans, like for example, against c5, there's a, a gambit. There's a gambit line here. If black plays queen b6, you just give up the b2 pawn. Okay, so let's see. So queen takes pawn, obviously, is the most, mm -hmm. uh, it's the only thing that it's really testing here. Mm -hmm. And let me see, I guess, yeah. And you play bishop d2. And so now, if I ask you what is white's plan without well, knowing I'm, any theory? I mean, without knowing any theory, first of all, ideas like rook b1 and knight b5 mm -hmm. come to mind. And also just e4 yeah. and just taking the center. So yeah. With everybody. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think... I remember even, like, specifically, I had a few games against 2300-rated players when I was, like, 2200 and trying to climb... Um, I think I won 90% of games. I don't think I ever lost if I got this on the board just because of how annoying it is for black to deal with uh, these positions. Because, like, think about it. If someone plays Kings Indian, they've played mm -hmm. 400, 500 games of Kings Indian. How many positions they've had of this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. So It's also, like, perfect for someone like me who just does not want to put in any work yeah, uh, no, study, but studying openings. <laughs> I broke... So I, I broke... 2300 uh mm -hmm. in college like i was in i was a freshman in college i was not one of these like 13 14 year old kids who was like an im so i got to college i like broke master as a 17 year old or even 18 and i i wanted to get to 2324 and i was like how do i do it like how the hell am i gonna i can't study all these openings and that's what i did like trumpowski made it so much easier um to to do now of course i would play gms and lose because <laughs> they would you know they would outplay me they would do something like this you know gf6 and uh. they would immediately mix it up and try to play like c5 and e5 and uh <laughs> like this trumpowski probably was the reason i even became like an fm the, the this, this bishop g5 and against d5 you know it would it would be a mix of things so i would play uh, sometimes with knight c3, London. Okay. And try to play, like, knight b5. Um, okay. Then... Yeah. I, I don't know these setups that well, because I never really played d4 that much, and I don't play d5 in response to d4. But, yeah, I, I mean, I'm guessing this is just one of those positions where white's kind of just playing, like, e3, knight f3, bishop d3, yeah. sorts of things. Knight probably going to d2 i would mm -hmm. imagine just leave the c pawn maybe flexible i don't know i feel like i've played when i play online i've noticed recently just a ton of players playing this with white so sorry <laughs> so I, I it's just any... like i just have to play against like you know the first five moves are, are already going to be like uh d4 bishop f4 like knight e, e pawn bishop d3 knight yep. d2 whatever well, I'll show, and then I'll, I'll we we can talk a little bit with uh, with black ways to instigate against this kind of like very calm and and tranquil systems. There's cool. a there are ways. I don't I don't think there there was a book out. There's a, a few books that came out very recently about London, and it's most of it is like the meta London, like when you play what piece where, basically. Hmm. Um, and I see. There's probably a lot of subtleties with move order that I'm yep. I'm not aware of. Yeah, like you don't play the knight. You I wait. see. You wait. wait. Is that there's? I mean, I'm imagining there's very concrete reasons for that that I'm I just don't know. So 
here's why. If you play knight f3, mm -hmm. uh, and black plays uh, c5. Yeah, this is probably the most testing thing, I, I'd imagine. So, so I imagine with black, it's probably trying to quickly attack the b2 pawn, I, I would guess, since you played bishop f4. Yes. So okay. you can if you you can play queen b6 immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, the main line is knight c6 and then c3 and then queen b6. Okay. But the point of this is that this is worse for white uh with the knight on f3 than with the knight on d2 with the knight on d2 is better oh i okay i mean okay just looking at it first thing that comes to mind is if we play because queen c2 is the most natural move here mm -hmm. but bishop f5 could be an idea yep. um yep yeah yep. so yep. you're probably forced to play queen c1 maybe yeah so instead of queen c2 but. So there's a there's a small trick in this position, this particular position. Uh, it's uh, if Bishop F5 here, there is D takes C5. Okay. There's like All a right. very small trick, but you you are correct that Bishop F5 is an idea yeah. in general in this position with yeah, C4. I did, didn't consider uh, pawn takes C5. No, of course it's it's like. It's like the it's like a total subtlety, but now the point is that after this there is queen b two and this is lost for white. Got it, got it. Even um, at, in that other position with pawn takes c five, the ending might not be that bad. I know you have the doubled pawns, but I don't know those positions might be not bad for black to play. Cause I yeah, it's, felt like when whenever you get the open a file in these types of positions, it's can never be that bad. But I I don't know. <laughs> Not sure. It's probably actually looking at it now. The pawn structure is maybe a bit too ugly to give compensation. Not sure. Well, white still has to be very precise. White still has to remember that rather than playing knight bd2, uh, mm -hmm. you have to play knight a3, knight b5. Like that's the key to this whole thing. Mm. Is uh, got it. You have to be very precise. But the after queen c2, uh, it, it's okay. I mean, black can also play like g6, bishop g7, and bishop f5. So g6, preparing this, and then... Gotcha. Um, the knight on d2 is slightly better for, for reasons like the knight is going to go to f3 anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And this speeds up your, your development and fights for e4 with the knight on d2. So there's even positions you can play e4 very quickly. Like, I'll show you what I mean if, like, c5, c3, you know, knight d2, knight c6. This is a very different story um, mm -hmm. because the rook is also not trapped. Yeah, yeah, totally. So No bishop f5 ideas. No bishop f5, and then if g6, this is too slow because, like I said, now you have this important move. So, like, there's, like, meta London, and, and if you learn these kinds of, like, little things... It can be a very annoying opening uh, for, for people. Plus, the other meta of the London entirely is like playing bishop f4 first, because now if they show you they're going to play king's Indian, whoops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, who, gotcha. who it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, totally. Now if they don't play d5, they're probably getting some like, not like modern opening type thing. Right, because you're going to play e4. Yeah, so they, 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 they almost have to play d5 here mm -hmm. I, I would imagine d5 is kind of pseudo force not really but you know, if, you know black doesn't play d5 white isn't tested at all so no white is not tested plus imagine a guy playing with black plays king's indian and sicilian <laughs> and they don't yeah. play d5 now they're playing neither of their openings yeah yeah totally so you can play like queen d2 and this is hardly oh i love this stuff this is this is my cup of tea right here. See, I'm I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad I can kind of you know because it's it's very different. Uh, this is actually sort of like the fantasy care. I mean, this is sort of like our our our, our blitz game. I'm just gonna play yep. queen d2 castle, run throw the h pawn down the board, and yep. just I don't know, hope that yep. something works out. But let me show you this. Let me show you this. So if they do play d5, there's still e3, e3, mm -hmm. bishop g7, h4. I see. So, most people will go h5 because they don't want to deal with this. Uh, but if they don't, 
this is already almost completely lost for black. Because people are going to be like, you know. Yeah, okay. Let me think. Yeah, yeah like, if I were playing black here, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess I play like c5. I'm not sure. I probably don't touch that pawn, but... Well, if they do, you. I hope you know what's next. I mean, I assume that you're sacking the rook here, just because, yes. like, if you don't, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes. And you got, like, bishop d3 coming, knight f3 mm -hmm. is coming out, to g5, maybe, I mean... It's bad. So... It's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. If I, if I were black facing that, and it, I probably would play h5 to h4, but if, if white already played h5, I don't know. I'd play c5 and try to... <laughs> Try to stir up some trouble, I guess. This this is the best thing for Black to do is to is to fight back with uh with um H five and some sort of C six or B five or, but this is also fine. And what you do is you can play Knight F three. So I, I like to do this too. Knight F three, Bishop E two, Knight E five, all fighting mm -hmm. for that square. And you see what I'm going yeah, for? I want G four. Yeah, you're, you're trying to push through G four. Yeah, I got you. Uh, so this is, you know, an another very annoying way to to put some pressure on the opponent um with like the, these d4 lines like super easy to learn too because like it it's 95 percent of what black will ever play <laughs> against <laughs> um what i'm gonna show you with uh with black to fight this will actually flow into this and by the way if the, if the dutch i mean <laughs> you gotta go e4 mm, you gotta go yeah e4. i Sure. You, have you played the Dutch at all, or have you played against I, it? I've, Not... I've never played the Dutch. I've never played against it, because I don't really play D4. But, I mean, I I sort of view the Dutch as being, like, kind of just, in general, a dubious opening. I mean, not not that it's, like, losing, but it's, like, I don't know. You have the right... You have the right approach to chess. You're very cultured. I'm, like, <laughs> Dutch is OP! Even though it's, like, terrible. Um... <laughs> I was retired from the Dutch, so like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you in tournaments. You play a something, and then you mm -hmm. get beaten so bad, you quit the opening. Yeah, that, yeah? that definitely happened with me. That happened with me with the, like, the win and were French. Okay. I just lost too many games playing the win and were French, and then I'm just like, not doing it anymore. Never going to play that, that again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You ever you, you like you're sitting at the board like God? I'm an idiot. Why did I play it? Why I could have played anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, dude, I relate so much. I know the feels. This e4 makes sense because I've even played um, against White playing f4 on the first move, playing e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so course. it's like, well, now we just get a better version of it. Yeah, exactly. Like this, this break. Of course, the idea being, first of all, you can get really wild with g4, but just Bishop g5. Mm. Um, so gotcha yeah and there's probably tons of tricks with taking the knight and playing queen h5 check in certain positions yes i mean if he plays d5 right here that like chop and like my first idea is to take the knight and play queen h5 yes. and secondary idea is like play f3 at some point but yeah, yeah you don't even need a secondary idea this is already winning for white so you did easy 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 you know got um, it yeah d5 and yeah staunton gambit won me i don't know like eight, like eighty percent of game. Like, like there's certain openings that for some reason haven't made it into practical master level repertoires. Um, were you the kind of person at master level who, like, were you trying to learn cutting edge theory? Like, what what was your approach to studying? I was different? never spending much time on openings, to be honest. Okay. I, I don't know. Like, as I said, my coach said I played garbage. So, um, no, I, not, not really. Like I had, a, a, I had a few lines that I maybe looked at. I almost always played E4, um, like against the Sicilian, I played a whole bunch of garbage anti-Sicilians. Um, I, I always played E4, C5, Knight F3, and then against D6, I'd play D4 and take with the queen. Oh, um, yes. Uh, so no Nidorf. Yeah, and I just... I, I always liked that line. I had a, a lot of fun games that I remember I, in that. I played this too. I'm gonna, I was going to invite you to, to a separate board just so we didn't have the, the, the names all, all screwed up. So let me just do that because I wanted to start a, a second board for uh, Black Opening. So you should cool. get an invite. 
Um, yeah, I put I put the moves on the board. I used to play this a lot too. And knight c6, bishop b5, right? Tor exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's a fun line. Usually, you know, I'm gonna get to castle. I'm gonna get some opposite side castling position, which I always liked. Like e even if it's not, even if in some openings going for like the opposite side castling isn't objectively the best course it's just like leads to fun games and i, I always like that it's also just fun because like the bishop for black doesn't have a lot of scope like engine never likes it it says it's like completely equal but um yeah in this position instead of c4 i usually played knight f3 i mean sorry knight c3 and then and then quick. bishop g5 yeah. castle yeah yeah. Um, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, like bishop g5 here, e6, and I'm going to castle and, like, I don't know, throw the h-pawn and figure things out from there. <laughs> I, I remember my friends at this level had a very, uh, had a very kind of, like, terrible thing that they invented. Um, and it was e6, long castle, bishop e7, and I swear mm -hmm. it was bishop f4. Mm. Sacrificing a piece. Whoa. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me see. This is probably objectively not sound, but it's going to take a moment for Black to figure out how to get his king out the middle. So mm -hmm. you got that going for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, queen b6 is the first move that comes to mind, but then you can't castle, so... Um, I mean, I guess you play queen b6 and then figure it out from there, but... So the only move that doesn't lose the game is bishop to d7, which is, you know, it, there's a reason that they liked well, it, because this is... <laughs> this is, well, uh... Because there's also... I, I would have lost the game then. All right. Queen b6. Yeah, the, I think bishop e3. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the problem. Ooh, trying to wiggle around to bishop c5. Yep. Depending yep, on yep. Where, where the queen's going. And it's like, oops... Now black has to castle and just sacrifice the bishop to not get mated. Um, Got it. So there's also like knight d5 lurking. If I remember correctly, I think it's knight d5 here. And then like, like rook d5. Rook. And black and has to remember this. I see. Really? Wow. Yeah. And then if you play like here... Black has to remember like this, uh, which which is at, at this point it's not that's not the hardest move. Um, yeah, if then, they got to this position, I guess you'd find that by process of elimination. But yeah, so there's there's a bunch of like landmines here, and it's not like an insane opening. I don't know what the current trend of intermediate level players is. Like, are they trying to play the Night Orf Sicilian? You know, the Dragon Sicilian? Like, I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't play online enough to get a good sense, but. I mean, if I do play online, I know if I play d4 and get this queen takes line, like, uh, at at my level, a lot of players aren't really familiar with this, I think. Even at, like, like you know, 2200, players aren't really so familiar with queen d4. Yeah, that's that's kind of the way you you navigate the waters to try to, to, try to break out. It, let's look at, um, let's look at for black. Let's look at some stuff for black. Uh, you know how to flip the board, right? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, let's say I didn't know how to flip the board. Okay, all good, all good. Uh, top right, there's a like near the rook. There's um. Oh, little... uh, settings. Yeah. So and... if you hover there, if you don't click settings, oh, if you just hover, there's a little. Gotcha. Flip cool. Got it. Thanks so much. No problem. I'm curious what some of your stats are. Like, so you play mostly bullet? I mean, sorry, uh, not bullet, blitz? Yeah, I play mostly just like 3-2. I've never really been that good at bullet. Also, a lot of times I, I'm not playing with a mouse, so if I'm playing online. So I just, bullet is, is sort of a no-go. Unless I'm playing like 2-1, which somehow still counts as bullet. But Yeah, that takes a, that takes a long time. I don't know why. Yeah, 2-1 is weird. Uh, but it's... It's but it's else. like two one is is possible to play on a trackpad. It's just like one second increment. That's like that's the trackpad thresholds where <laughs> like 
uh you still can get flagged on a one second increment on a trackpad but if you have a mouse like if you like you can't really get flagged yeah if 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 you if i mean unless obviously you can you know run out of time but if you're actively moving as fast as you can with a mouse you can't get flagged so with black e4 yeah so i used to play e6 and the french yeah and by used to play i mean i i suppose i still do because i never learned anything else but i mean like okay okay uh one thing that i also enjoyed messing around with at this level is against knight d2 or knight c3 mm -hmm. uh, i like to take and then play knight f6 uh you want to take with the g-pawn or yes how did you know? okay <laughs> well because otherwise it doesn't seem much fun <laughs> you take with the g-pawn yeah and you try to go knight c6 b6 bishop b7 and just go this way Okay, I, I like that stuff. I could totally get behind that. I didn't play this way, but I, yeah, I, I like that. So this is good. Of course, the issue with the French is also the advanced, but I'm assuming that you don't care about the advance. I never did when I played against yeah, it. Yeah, no, the advance is fine. The issue that I always had with the French is the exchange, because it's like if I'm playing a lower rated opponent, it's like I have to find some way of dealing with this. And, um, if objectively, if I go for queenside castling, it is dubious. And like, I think knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7, this sort of stuff, going for a long castle, mm -hmm. is probably not like objectively the best. I, I know when I played this as black, if white played knight c3 here, mm -hmm. I was like, because knight c3 to me doesn't make too much sense unless you're going for long castle. Because why, why would you block the c pawn? Mm -hmm. Um, when I saw knight c3, I'm like, oh, man, thank goodness. Like, we have an exchange French player who actually wants, you know, a, a fight. Yeah. Because now I'll just I'll just go knight f6, and, like, I'll, I'll castle kingside. And then when he castles queenside, well, I'll have c6, b5. And, like, you know, he'll throw stuff at me on the kingside. I'll throw stuff at the queenside, and we'll have, like, you know, an interesting game. Yes. I'm not saying it's great for black, but, like, it's a fight. But if they just play like bishop d3 and like knight f3, it's like, oh man, like, what what do I do? You know. I always did this actually, so it's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah, I I didn't like the exchange French. It's one of the reasons I play the Karl Khan. But yeah, I kind of hated this because I was like, why would anyone voluntarily do this with white? But a surprising amount of people actually. Yeah, it, it's actually enough so that if. Like, if, if I was playing a really lower-rated player, it's, like, you almost have to play something else. Just out of fear that they might play the exchange French, and then, like, in order to generate winning chances, you're going to have to risk a significant amount. I kind of always stuck to the plan here uh, of, of the Long Castle. Until, okay. And, and what I would do... Um, is basically wait to see like if they go b4 okay boom i'm short castling like, gotcha so for instance like castle okay we have to deal with this so for example like bishop d6 rook e1 knight e7 and then try to play like f6 and go go this way plus i'm pretty sure you have like this fishing pole tactic sometimes with h5 even you know just Give yeah, them... I mean, in, in this position, if white hasn't played c3, you probably can, like, take f3 and take d4, right? Yes, you can take and take, yes. But, like, there, there's a lot of positions where if you just, if you're already, ca so, for instance, like, c3, mm -hmm. uh, and then mm -hmm. queen d7, and then, like, if, if white plays, like, bishop g5, for example, uh, you have f6, and then long castle. So, boom, boom, and then long castle, g5, h5, and... Yeah. I love these positions for black, because I feel like this is the last thing that white wanted. Got it. Yeah, and I, I definitely, against the exchange French, I did go for this long castle sometimes, but I always felt like, because I, I like the positions when white went for long castle, so like it's like I like playing against this one tempo down with black. If, if I'm forced to go for this to generate chances, it's like, mm, man. <laughs> did you... <laughs> I, liked, I like this. I like this. If I was ever a boxer... Mm -hmm. I would take so many years off my life because I would just want to go forward rather than, you know, fight the... Because the <laughs> I just... I, I, I like to mix it up. So the, But the second... Yeah, like, I, you have to be smart. You can't just castle into this because now you're castling into an attack. 
Totally. Uh, so this is not what you want. Like B4. It all comes down to one tempo, which might confuse some people. But for example, like this is a very different story because actually you're in time to shuffle out and then start your own attack over here. Gotcha. But, uh, and this is, but it's just a complicated fight. Like Karo Khan for me is a much better way of avoiding any exchange. Uh, but of course there is this. So this is a very different story. Advanced Karakan, as, as I just said to you, it's, it's annoying. It's a very annoying thing to deal with. Especially because at a lower level, I recommend C5 to a lot of people. Gotcha. But DC5 is very good. I mean, it's a very good move if White has good engine preparation. So just gotcha. to take, take the pawn and like call the bluff. Um... But yeah, Car like Caro for me, before everybody learned like all the ways to get to to play against it for for me was number one. And then like D four, uh, since I was a Caro player, I played Slav at C six. Mm. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the Dutch defense is a lot of fun. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say. Uh, <laughs> But you know, there's there, there's there's other things. Like for example, the Dutch is really <laughs> good against London players. The thing is, you're not, you don't know what they're gonna play, so it's a little bit too early. Uh, you don't know if they're gonna do. Got this. it. Because what you set up like some sort of stone wall or something against it with the yeah. Dutch, or you, what, what you try to do is like knight f6. So this is what I like to do against against London versus Dutch. I'll play like either g6 d6 and try to push for e5. Mm -hmm. Or I'll go B6. Okay. Something like this. And then the, the, the grasp over E4 that you get in these positions is really annoying for white. This is another thing. So Got it. You'll play like knight to the center. Sometimes even, by the way, like bishop D6 is totally fine. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, the doubled pawns aren't going to be bad here. They probably just control a lot of stuff. And yep. they give you an open file for whatever give it's you worth. Open file, like, okay, good luck getting to this pawn. I just played, you know, Queen E7. Oh, my God, that was an expert arrow drawing. <laughs> knight comes to the center, of course. And then, like, when you castle, knight comes, rook is coming, g5, g4. Everything is coming once you get the knight. And um, it's like... Uh, this 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 is a lot of fun. Also, if you want to get really creative, you can make two fianchettos, but that's if you want to get very, very creative. Um, which I like, but the problem is that if white is clever, white won't castle, and white will just play for h4 and long. Yeah, castle. I was going to say. <laughs> oh, you, <laughs> could so throw, you, you're could, aware. Could throw the h-pawn down the board. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, this kind of sucks. When, I, when this happens in Blitz, I'm like, shit. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't have played yeah. this. The king's not committed. Always got to worry about this. Yeah, yeah exactly. So king e6 could even and... maybe stick in the middle, stick on f1, even depending. I don't know. Not sure. No, but even like queen e2. By the way, even like switching it around, because like what a lot of London players do is they they develop the pieces and they keep developing the pieces. They don't make any pawn breaks, <laughs> which is like stupid because you can just play e4. Um, so that's. That's like another thing, uh, but but like, just regular old classical Leningrad Dutch, you know, can lead to a position where you have like a really nice King's Indian, and then you try to play for e five. Gotcha. Queen e eight, something like this, and like with the knight and e five, um, and things like that. So, uh. That's, like, to me, that's the biggest difference, which separates, uh, I think you're, like, 20 to 2300 Blitz versus, like, 25, 2600, like, just, like, chess.com Blitz. You